Hello, YouTube, and hello, all of our Facebook happy friends. So, we are going to be joined here by a special guest. I'm waiting for her to get on here. Let's see if I, hopefully, uh, that's, ooh, that's interesting. She's not on here quite yet. You popped up here, it's because you're doing comments on there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, we have special guest Laura Kromzak with us today, and I'm just waiting for her to join in with us because I don't quite, sorry for my finger in here, you guys. Hey, Christina. So hopefully she'll be on here and can get in here okay. Hey, Felicia. We'll just wait for her to get on here, but <laughs> Margie's totally talking to people. So while we're waiting here, I'm just going to go over to my laptop so I can answer. We'll just give a little bit of time for people to get situated and get in here. We are doing it on a phone today, if you haven't noticed, guys. That's why you can all of a sudden see my finger all the time going in there. Um... Very cool. Let's see. So how's everyone doing? Margie, you want to give us, while well, I get myself connected on here and try to get Laura on here, can you give them the rundown stuff? Well, I'm Margie Fink and... I'm Darren Fink. We're with Transfiguring Adoption and we're just here for our weekly uh, Monday caregiver check-in where we just get on together with fellow caregivers, um, whoever kind of joins in. Sometimes we have professionals, sometimes we have former foster youth, adult adoptees, um, all different kinds of people who are interested, just popping in. And this is just a great time to get questions asked, um, to give, get and give advice. Laura's on now. Um, and this is not um, all the legal Smeagol stuff. This is replacing your therapist or going against what your caseworker says or any of that kind of stuff. This is just um, our time to come together, support each other, encourage each other, um, validate each other, and so, connect. Yeah. Very cool. I'm having a little trouble getting, is everyone, is the video looking okay for everyone? Because I'm having trouble getting it to work on my computer. Oh, it's because I maybe have it paused? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> hopefully everything's okay. So, very cool. Thanks, you guys, so much for joining us. We had a great talk last week. Just so you know the ground rules, as always. We, this is your time, um, so since it's your time, we want you to add uh, conversations, questions, suggestions at any time. So we have, if we can get Laura added in on here, we have some great things that we talk about in lieu of you guys. There's Laura. Hey, Laura. Hello. In lieu. Oh, I don't want to say in lieu. No, we don't <laughs> want to do in lieu of anything. We're talking about the loo. <laughs> no, let's not talk about the loo, please. <laughs> well, that is a foster and adoptive subject, though. I mean, foster and adoptive parents are some of the best loo talkers that I've ever heard of before in my life. <laughs> yes, we just had some potty talk at the table, and we had to send a child into the corner for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's good times. Well, hey, we just did, we just said hello to everyone. Um, we're just going over the ground rules real quick. This is your time. Um, we got folks that are still coming in here. Uh, we are showing on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live. Those of you that are on YouTube, you're not going to be able to see Laura because she's not joining us on YouTube, but you are going to be able to hear her. So we're still watching comments and everything on YouTube. Uh, after we're done with this, I'm going to be uploading our Facebook conversation. Hey, Victor, how you doing? We're going to be uh, uploading this to our YouTube channel. But uh, this is your time as caregivers or professionals or people that are just concerned about foster and adoptive situations. Um, this is your time to ask questions or to uh, give suggestions or advice. And like always, we say don't be afraid to comment or give advice because I guarantee there is a foster or adoptive parent that's new in the game and they don't know something that you're going to share. Um, no kidding, I, we've had people that it's, it's been mind boggling to them to hear that uh, kids need to get to bed on time. It was life changing for them. <laughs> so don't hold back any advice. So uh, Christina's on here with us. Good to see Christina and Felicia as always. Um, but 
Uh, Laura, I'm going to introduce you as best I can, and then I'm going to let you fill in the gaps. Laura has been, uh, we've known Laura for quite a while now. We knew Laura when Margie and I lived in Southern Illinois, and instead of transfiguring adoption, uh, the 501c3 was called Community Life Concepts of Southern Illinois. And Margie had started a support group called Community Kids. Community Kids uh, met once a month as a resource support group to uh, help foster adoptive and kinship families. And uh, when we left, Laura uh, helped take that on that responsibility of keeping the support group going. And so she is well-versed in support groups. Um, she is also a foster and adoptive parent. And she is just well-versed all around in what foster and adoptive families need or are going through. And she's in the trenches with us. Um, the, we have recently rebranded, as we've rebranded, gone with a name change with the 501c3 is now Transfiguring Adoption. Community Kids is now called uh, Fostering the Village. So, hey, Laura. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> is there anything else you want to share about us? Tell, tell us how many, tell us about your family a little bit, as much as you want to share. Okay. Well, let's see. We were licensed. I'm trying to think back. Um, 2007, I think it was. That sound about right, Margie? <laughs> probably. I know we met probably around 2009. 2010, I think, is when Community Kids kind of first became official. So somewhere in that 2009, 2010 range is when... Was it? Okay. Because I, I used to go to, over to your meetings when it was just like a handful of us. Yeah. And, um, and then we moved... We had a second group that started, and then Darren and Margie abandoned me... <laughs> And left me in charge of the group. And for four years, I never claimed that I was in charge. I kept saying I inherited it. <laughs> <laughs> but we've, I don't know, we've had a smattering of placements. And we uh, just recently in January adopted our most recent two. We had, we've had them almost five years now, actually. And uh, they officially became ours in January of this year. We are no longer fostering, but I am still very involved with supporting foster families. And I, t I seem to be a magnet for a uh, fictive kin. And I'm not sure why, but like all of a sudden fictive kin just come out of nowhere. And, and of course they have no training. I have no idea what they're getting into. You know, they pretty much had people stop at their door and say, Hey, would you like some kids that you are probably related to? And so that's kind of how it works around here. And so just getting them through like, okay, you need equipment and you need clothes and this is what you do and these kids need this. And so it's fun. That's, I think I really enjoy that the most is helping the ones who are just, you know, sitting there going, somebody throw me a life jacket because I'm drowning. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, and Laura, you doing, you're, uh, you're, you're not putting, pulling yourself up as high as you should be because Laura does a fantastic job along with uh, Andrea to uh, help out a lot of foster and adoptive families in the Southern Illinois area. So um, that's why we wanted uh, Laura to come on today just so that she could talk with you guys and share her insight and knowledge and uh, we'll just have a good conversation with all of us. So um, I thought we would just kind of start off there. Again, this is kind of a leaping point. Uh, those of you that are regulars kind of know how this works. We're just going to start talking about something. And then if you guys have something you want to talk about, we're going to stop when you guys have something. So what do you guys, uh, Laura has, is like we said, leading a, a, a support group and resource group. What do you guys see as, what, what are the needs? Like, what do you need in a support group when you're looking at a support group for foster and adoptive families? Like, I'd love to know, like, what other people are thinking that. that. Hey, and Laura, just so you <laughs> okay. know, sometimes we sit there here in silence just for a few seconds because there's, like, a lag. And so, like, we'll ask okay. people a question. Like, we don't have to, but sometimes we'll ask people a question. And then, like, 10 seconds later, people are answering. And we're like, oh, let's go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just love to hear what people have to say, what they would want to see in a support group. And I would – so, Laura, you're getting primed up. Like, what are some things that you see – that uh, I guess people are most grateful for when they come to a support group? Uh, Lisa, Larry, well, she says resources. People are wanting to see yes. resources. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> um, she's, she's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, like yeah, resources <laughs> are for sure. Um, I think the biggest thing is the letting them know that they're not by themselves because most of them feel like they're they're the only ones in the whole room or planet that's doing this and that has this crazy life. And so when you get a, you know, even a few people together that have the same crazy life, it's, it's refreshing, it's renewing. And you, you just, you do, you feel rejuvenated just because you know, somebody else is out there that has to put their beds, you know, their kids to bed at eight o'clock or life is terrible the next morning. I mean, <laughs> just silly things like that. <laughs> It is. I think I think that's a lot of what uh, people talk about, too, is just not wanting to know that they're alone, because I feel like this is <laughs> Janice says yes, with a big exclamation point. Janice, tell us what else that you're hoping to see in a, in a support group when you see things. Um, we uh, I think that's what I hear a lot, though, is people just don't want to feel alone. Like, I feel like we we were like people are meant to be relational people beings and I don't feel like when we feel isolated I feel like we're at our worst yeah so I feel like that's I mean I feel like some people think that's they're not doing enough if they just connect and like help people feel like they validate feelings but sometimes validating feelings and letting people know they're not crazy and they're not alone is like the best medicine I feel like right I mean I can have I could have 100 people tell me that I'm doing a good job but until I know that they have actually dealt with a full on meltdown about brushing your teeth in the morning, <laughs> then I'm like, thanks. You know, <laughs> not that I'm not appreciative of your kind words, but it doesn't really fill my tank any. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Let's talk about filling. Hey, and while we're talking about this too, I'm going to read off some of the comments, but I forgot to tell everyone, if you could take a few seconds and while you're listening with all of us, uh, kind of, uh, facilitate things. If you could go ahead and share on your Facebook page that you're watching this so we can get more people in here, the better, the bigger the conversation, the more fun and the more stuff we're going to have. Hey, Dusty, glad that you're joining us again. Missed you. Um, so I have Felicia says, someone to hear you and know the difference between when you're venting parental frustrations or in need of helping and follow through with supports. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Like knowing, I guess, I think it's one thing to say that we need support and we're also saying we just need someone to hear us, but we need someone to know when we need them to actually follow through on something or we're just venting. I think that's hard to do. Denise yeah. says um, a space that is judgment free. It's big. And then Christina says, someone who understands, I have new parents called to be reassured all the time, whether it's parenting advice or how to do the paperwork or just to have someone listen. Again, I think it all goes back to just feeling like you're not alone. Yeah. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Is that what you see in your support groups? Is it just people just are in the support group, like <laughs> the support groups, like you're, you're all over. We're, to, we're on with Dr. Laura. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In my multitude of support groups across the nation, this is what we're experiencing. <laughs> but not yeah, the I mean, but what, like what, because you have a fantastic support group going on. Like you really do. We do. Like what, what do you see? Like, is that what people are getting the most excited about is just someone that understands them? Yeah, absolutely. What I, what I like about our support group as well is that we can kind of determine our own training. Um, I know a lot of the agencies will put out uh, trainings every month, but I feel like we have a little more control. Like, you know, we can sit around the table and go, I am really struggling with this. I am going through this. And somebody in the group may say, oh, we went through that. And this is what we did. This is the resource we used. Let's get somebody in from that, you know, that group or that agency or that, you know, therapist or whatever. Let's get them in and talk about it, you know. Um, so it's, it's nice to have that kind of control in our group. Um, but, yeah, just knowing that you're around a table with kindred spirits and you get food and somebody is watching your kids for like two hours, like that's the best. <laughs> hey, well, and share that because uh, some people, they don't, so, like, Thanks, Dusty, for saying, because she said this is her support group right here. So 
uh, for caregiver check-in. Thanks. There are some people, thank you so much, by the way, that sent us direct messages saying that that this is like yeah. makes a difference every Monday night. Thank you so much. And I think for us, especially because we're new to Florida yeah. and stuff and we don't, we haven't really found our, you know, tribe of foster yeah. or adoptive folks around here, like being here with you guys on Monday nights, this is our, this is how we kind of get refreshed and revamped and ready to go for the week. Yeah. For and there's a lot of places that don't have like local support groups. I mean, we're in Southern Illinois. Our group says foster care and adoption, adoption support of Southern Illinois. But we've had people from, you know, the Chicago area, from Minnesota, you know, saying we don't have anything. Can we please join your group just to be even in a Facebook group? with other foster parents because they don't have anything like that. I think we're blessed in Illinois. There's, there's at least three Illinois foster support groups that I'm in. There's one for the, the whole state. And then there's a couple of regional ones. So, I mean, I'm glad that you guys started this group in Southern Illinois. And I feel like it's kind of catching your trendsetters. <laughs> well, I know. We've just been rowing the boat for like what, six years. <laughs> yeah. When we, well, we started meeting in 2010, and I remember some of those first meetings, people were driving an hour and a half, two hours one way just to get there because they needed their support so badly. Um, we had people driving from other states even, um, you know, because they needed it. They just needed that support um, and they weren't getting it anywhere else. Um, yeah, see. it's and, and I feel like, yeah, like Wendy was saying that she doesn't have any, hey, the trammels are on. Um, oh, hi, Jackie. Hey, um, Jackie and Daryl. Yeah, like I, Wendy's saying, you know, there's no, no support groups out by her. And I, I hope that stuff like this, uh, our caregiver check-in is at least helping. Um, I, I feel like I feel like there are different pros and cons to an online thing because we're not seeing people face to face where maybe in a like a local setting, maybe you're able to divulge a little bit more information and get that like face to face there. Um, what do you guys do when you do a support group? Like, how do you take care of foster and adoptive families? Like, what do you do? What's your, what's your process every, every time you do it? Is that my Is question it, or general public? Yeah, no, that's your that's question. That's all you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what do we do to take care of them? Well, uh, one thing that I've noticed in our area, some of the larger metropolitan areas will have respite care. We do not have like agency provided respite care. So getting together with other foster parents, getting to know their kids, getting to know them, um, they're already licensed. So then it's like, hey, you want to trade kids for a weekend? Because I got this thing and I can't really bring them or, you know, so you, you kind of have your own respite care network. And Jackie has kept my kids more than once. I even tried to pay her an extra 50 bucks just to potty train the boy, but she didn't do it. She gave it back to me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but it's, I, I feel like you guys have something special too, because like uh, you do, you do feed the parents while they're there and then, and the kids and, the kids, and you give the parents the time to be with other parents and away from the kids. Yeah. So albeit yeah. you might be, <laughs> you might be training or doing something, you're doing it with other adults and you're having adult mm -hmm. conversation. So right. that's, I think, huge. <laughs> that's huge just to have yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone that's watching, does anyone else, do you miss that adult conversation or just having a, a couple minutes away? Like, we love our kids, but you just miss having some adult conversation for a little while. Felicia says, yes. I don't, again, with the lag, I don't know if she's saying yes to me or something else, but <laughs> I'm going to say yes to me because it sounds, I don't know, it sounds empowering. But anyways. Total moral supports what Jackie says. Yeah, for sure. So what what are you like what are some wins that you see with a support group, Laura? Um, well, like I said, the training that we get to bring in, I think sometimes the agencies plan I mean, you and you have to, you do try to plan like a year in advance, but we can sit down with our parents and go, you know, what do you want to hear? What kind of, you know, training do you want? That's a win. Um, the fact that we are, we can sit around the table and be open and, you know, you do get new people in there who think that maybe it's just a gripe fest, but 
once you get to know the people that you meet with every month and you, you just know their personalities, you know, some people are snarky and it's okay to blow off steam and you're not, you know, cutting down anybody or the agency or some, the way something was handled, you know, you're just, you just got to blow off steam to somebody who understands. It's like, you know, telling a, a joke to somebody who doesn't understand any of the characters in the joke, like they're not going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And then we swap, I mean, necessities, you know, that's the first place that we post, Oh, my kids growing out of clothes, you know, who needs girl size seven, who needs boy size three. And so that's, you know, we kind of have our own little swap going there too. I've got a crib, I have a changing table, somebody needs something, you know, and then it just all appears. So that's nice. Sorry. I had like an interruption there. Am I still on oh, here? No okay, I think I'm still Yes. Good. All right. Rang in it, so it kind of cut the video out for a second. That was interesting. Forgot to put it on manner mode. Um, yeah, Wendy's saying that it would just be nice to have respite. And I think that's, I think it was a huge thing because we're always talking about self-care on here. And I think that's another huge thing that people are always talking about is needing self-care. Um, this is, I mean, Laura, would you think, do you have people that come like every month? Think, like, is this their self-care? I would say so because we do, we do have a lot of like stay at home parents. And let me tell you what I, when we first started fostering, I worked full time. So the kids went to aftercare and daycare and, you know, it was paid for. And then I decided to, you know, resign my job and stay home. And we took in toddlers <laughs> and I about Are they blew anywhere? my mind. <laughs> what? Yeah. Anywhere? I was like, why, why, why would I do this? I'm like, can I please go back to this job? 300 international students were a lot less work than three toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. So what, so does anyone have any questions for Laura about how they arrange their support group? How maybe they started the support group, how they get it going? Um, Felicia says stay at home parents need out of the house. Yeah, they do. I think I think you definitely you need away from that and, situation. And out of right? the house does not mean in the grocery store with all the kids in tow. Like not no. that kind of out of the house. No, no. <laughs> Felicia says toddlers are brutal. <laughs> what what do you guys have questions for Laura? Like as far as like what do you have questions about how she runs her support group? Hey, Mark's on here. Good to see you, Mark. Um, what how they run their meetings, what they try to do. Now, I know, Laura, one thing that you said was that some people might show up, like it might be their first time, and they just complain, complain. Um, you're not affiliated with an agency of any kind. Right. Um, so what what do you mean? Like, it, it's okay to vent, but what, what do you guys do? At, like, do you, what, take that further. What do you mean you only, you only let the venting and stuff go so far? Yeah, we try to be as productive as possible because if everybody sits around and complains about how terrible things are or how bad the caseworker is or how bad this judge is in this county, you know, you're not really solving any problems, you know, so blowing off, blowing off steam is different than um, just a gripe fest, I, I, you know, and there is a fine line between it, I would say, but trying to solve problems like, okay, my child is, let's see, I'll use one of Margie's previous ones. It's like peeing down the, uh, the radiator vents or whatever, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I remember that. It was a long time ago, but I remember that. Yeah, and it's soaked into the, to the, the insulation in the wall and into the subflooring. It was beautiful. <sighs> right. So complaining about that and making jokes about it, you know, and then... And then it's like, okay, you know, let's figure out, has anybody ever tried to get urine out of insulation or do you just have to cut it out, you know? Well, yeah, we do have a lot of potty talks, don't we? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it seems to be, I'm telling you, foster adoptive parents are the best potty talkers. And I don't mean with the word eaters. I mean, like, actually potty. Like, <laughs> like, um, like poop everywhere. So exactly. two questions here for you, Laura. I have one person right. that's asking me, do you have sitters for the kids at your meetings? Yes, and that has been more difficult, um, of course. Uh, we have gone from friends, people in the church, 
Um, I've gone to the local university even and have like gone out to the social work um, degrees. There was a few teachers that were very interested in like giving their students credit for training hours. They all have to do some kind of like public service or whatever so they could come to our meetings and help out and watch. Um, and, and honestly, this might be sad, but like our teenage kids, they live it every single day. So they're actually probably more effective than somebody who's brand new going through a social work degree because they have no clue. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I've had my oldest one when she was like 13, she was in charge of the college students and telling them what to do. I mean, it was our church. So we kind of knew the lay of the land and how everything worked, but she also knew what we expected as far as behaviors and don't allow them just to run amok, like give them something constructive to do. And so, you know, our, our older kids, we're all in the same building. So, uh, but we do try to have at least a couple of adults keeping an eye on everything, but our, our teenage, our own teenage children, bio adoptive, even some foster, they're, they're very helpful with the kids. Um, I do have another question of people. Someone asked, how do you get people to show up? Because I can't seem to get people to come to, to the one that this person's starting. Well, every, every night is a bad night. I, I don't think there's any one night that's good for everybody. So if you just, you're just going to have to throw it, throw it out there and make it happen. And if you're there regularly, uh, I think they will show up. I mean, geez, Darren and Margie, you guys, again, you started this eight years ago. And I remember being there when it was just you and me. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because I, I always look back at that and there were like the months where it was you guys. And then the next month it was another couple. And we were always like, man, if they could just meet, everything would be great. And every, you know, if all these people that would show up like all at the same time, it'd be amazing. And it was like six months of that where you know, yeah, we're like, right. if the Cossacks could meet these people, and these could meet people, could meet these people, we would have so much fun, and we would learn so much and have such a great time. And it, it took probably a good solid six months of just showing up, and there were times where we had food, and we're just like, all right, kids, this is like our food for the next week, because nobody showed up. And... Yeah, like, I feel like, because, so, yep. so for those of you that are joining us, and you don't know, like, our, our for Transfiguring Adoption, our volunteer mobilization is called Elf Squad. Um, it's a bunch, it was a grassroots movement. Um, the problem they're having right now, they're starting local chapters around the nation. The problem they're having right now is they're telling me they can't get people to come. And it's the same thing that we're telling them is pick, pick a consistent time, pick a consistent neutral location, because yeah. some people want to have it out of their homes. And we're like, that's a little creepy for strangers to go over to someone's house and in the middle of the city. And yeah, so neutral location and, and consistent time and, and things will work out eventually. Like people will get it. They'll, they'll know. It's just like with McDonald's, like we always, like, I, I mean, I think just about everyone can tell us like when McDonald's, like the nearest McDonald's to them is open or the nearest Starbucks is open. Like you, they're, because they're consistent, they know they, they're, they're open at those hours all the time. And we've got to be the same way when we're starting these meetings. So were you trying to, oh, I thought you were nudging me for something. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I also had a comment on here uh, with Logan. He was talking about when you were talking about your daughter kind of in charge of the, uh, the college kids that were, were taking over things and watching kids. He said, yeah, all that book learning only goes so far. Um, I think that's true. Like there's some, <laughs> there, I think with our kids, I think experientially, I think they, they understand things uh, because they've lived with it a little bit, a little bit more. Jackie says, patience, build it, they will come. <laughs> <laughs> patience, build it, they will come. They will come. Even if they have Boy Scouts and 4-H every other Friday. Yeah. Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> She's our people. Remember that. You said that. She's our people. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, so what else are you guys? Does anyone else have any questions for Laura what a support group looks like? Um, are there things like even when we're doing the Monday night check-in that you guys are wanting to see more of after you're hearing all of this? What are some of the... Well, and one thing that I'll say, uh-oh, we're, we're not seeing Laura. No, she's right there. She's right, but look, I I'm lagged. Just... I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, there's like well, a catch up. exclamation point. Um, there she is. So, I... okay. 
flags. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, so for those of you who don't know, so um, Fostering the Village, which Laura heads up in Illinois, um, and then we have Compassion Closet running in Knoxville. Those are programs that are underneath Transfiguring Adoption. Um, and one of the things that um, hopefully in the future we foresee is that these are things that we can replicate. Um, just like Elf Squad, volunteer mobilization is replicating around the country. Um, building out these programs around the country is something that we're potentially looking at. You know, we can replicate fostering the village. We can replicate Compassion Closet to other locations. Um, and that would be great. So that, that's kind of one of the things that we can talk about. Yeah. But what was your, sorry. I totally well, honestly, sorry to you. No, that's totally fine. So, so yeah, like that is something that we can replicate and we're looking at actually our board. That was like one, as soon as we transfiguring adoption became the, the 501c3, the, the board, one other thing questions to me was, are we going to start replicating the support group? Um, and they really were looking at that, which I was not that I didn't think you guys, I think you guys are doing a great job. I just wasn't expecting them to all of a sudden be like, I thought they were going to ask about our other projects that we were doing or different things like that. And they're like, so the support group, how are we replicating that? And I was like, <laughs> I, I haven't talked to Laura or Andrea about this. I, I yes, we can replicate it. Um, what, what are some of the, I guess challenges. I mean, some people already hit it, like people not coming to the meetings. What what are what's a challenge of the meeting? Because I think everyone thinks like if they had a support group meeting, it would be like they've arrived. They would like all their problems would be solved. Um, we you'd be able to vent with people. You'd have camaraderie. Like, what are some of the challenges that? Like, what are the downsides of having the support group? Are there any? Um, yes, and I would say logistically getting um, speakers can be difficult. I mean, like, you know, we're on, a, we were on a Friday night. People don't, I mean, they don't mind working late, like Monday through Thursday, but Friday is a little more <laughs> like, no, I'm off the clock now, you know, now we have to move to Saturday because our venue has got a conflict with Friday night. So now we've got to try Saturday and that's, you know, that can be difficult because we don't want to, I mean, we love getting together with just the families and just talk and catch up. And we haven't seen you all summer because we do take off um, for May, June and July, spend time with our families um, instead of, you know, just kind of get out of the schedule of school and, uh, you know, sports and everything else. Um, so getting back into it, and catching up with everybody is nice, but we don't want it to be like that every month because then you will have people who go, no, I've had a really busy week and we're not really talking about anything. So I'm just going to stay home. And I think that's how you lose a lot of your regular attenders. Um, another challenge is um, child care and food, I would say, because I don't think I know a foster family who doesn't have kids outnumber the adults. I mean, <laughs> right. we have had meetings where we've had 30 to 40 adults and 80 kids. I mean, it's, it's, that's just kind of typical. Like you're going to have, you know, a bunch of children. So that can be a little daunting. Um, and then, you know, there was a couple of years ago where we were like, man, we could probably do something um, legislatively. Like we could, we might be able to speak and get into all of that and talk to representatives and stuff but that's a lot more work and takes a lot more people doing more work and so you get to that point where we could really make a difference in our state or we could just sit here and kind of serve ourselves and each other you know that was a challenge for me because yeah i think we all wanted to do more but then it's like can I really do more and still serve my own family and the kids that I have in my care? Right. So those are the challenges that I have seen over the past several years. <laughs> Felicia's ready to sound the alarm if you foster parent rights. <laughs> Viva, la la Viva la revolution. I can't do it. <laughs> Good. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think I think what I'm hearing you say too is it's like I think everyone wants a support group, but when you're actually creating the support group, it's way more work than what you think it is, and there's a there's a little bit yeah. of stress that goes behind <laughs> it, like adding all the logistics and different things like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dusty says, "Oh, you have no idea. I'm working on legislation right now, and it's so so time consuming." Yeah. Um, and then I, these support group meetings, like I mean, I think. I think what's uh, really cool for you and Andrea, Laura, is when I think it's so seamless that when people show up, they don't realize that it was a lot of work. And I think that's time telling, uh, like really telling of the people leading something that is when they can't tell how much time it took to create something, but it works out so well. Right. But that is, that is like when we're talking about a support group, that is a rough part is just how time consuming it is and, and rough. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, thanks, Jackie. Keep in touch. Bye, Jackie. Um, so what do you, I want to know what everyone else thinks. Do you guys have any other questions for Laura? If you're just, we're kind of at our halfway point. So we're going to keep going for about another 15 minutes and then we're going to wrap up here like we usually do. Go ahead and if you're just joining us, go ahead and hit that share button on Facebook so that you can let other people know that we're talking. And the more people we have in here, the better conversation we're gonna have. Laura and uh, is one of the co-facilitators of a support group called Fostering the Village that runs out of Southern Illinois. It's a monthly group. Um, she, a lot of people are asking about support groups or different things in local communities. And we thought we'd have her on here to talk about her group, what it looks like, how, she's, how it runs. Um, so if you guys have any questions about that. Other than that, you guys know how this runs if you're regulars. If not, uh, we will entertain any questions or suggestions or advice you have about foster care and adoption um, on here. And this is your time. Uh, Laura, Margie, and I are just facilitating conversations. So this can be your self-care time. So let me know if you guys have any questions or any advice or whatnot for any of the three of us. Um, not to say that we know it, we're just going to facilitate the conversation on it. So, um, Laura, what do you think, um, when you guys are off for the summer, do you notice, like, what, what are the summers like when you have it off? Is it definitely time for a break from doing a support group or do you miss the support group or how does that work? I, I definitely miss the support group, and I know several families do, but there's always so much going on, you know, family vacations and camps and everything, and just not being in a routine of having to get up every day necessarily, especially with the kids, or, you know, we don't, we try not to do activities in the summer, um, uh, this may change because we've got Emily in gymnastics, but I usually try to bow out of stuff in the summer and just kind of take it easy and just kind of do our own thing. But I do miss the support group. And I know the kids are always asking, is tonight community kids? Is tonight community kids? No, we're not going to go back until we go back to school. Oh, and here's my photo bomber. <laughs> photo bomb! Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's not shy. Trust me. I think that's one of the things like our kids love the most when we started community kids. I mean, was the fact that um, they were around kids that were in their same situation. A lot of times, you know, Southern Illinois is a rural area and there'd be times they were, they weren't going to school with other foster kids. They didn't know other foster kids. And then you go to community kids and everybody's other foster kids are adopted or, you know, and, and for right. the, for the birth children to be able to connect with other birth family, you know, birth children and other families, um, they became each other's best buddies. And then when we did um, respite, you know, we would trade respite and stuff. And so it was just like they were just having sleepovers with some of their best friends. It wasn't like they were going to see strangers or something. They were going to see their best buddies from community kids. Yeah. Exactly. Alicia, and same. it makes it easier for respite, too, because then the, the kids know the other parents. Mm -hmm. And so they're not necessarily, you know, they're not going, they're going to you know, Mariah's house, you know, with Mariah's family instead of, oh, you're going to go see my friends that you've never met. It, it's better for the kids that way, too. Felicia says that she feels like she needs, um, she needs more support during the summer with school out. And I think that's true. And, and yeah, you get that, you get that lack of routine when everybody's out of routine. A lot of times, plus, 
you know, depending on if you're at home, you're spending more time with the kids because you need the break. Or single more. parent too. Yeah. If you're a single parent, you definitely need that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, interesting. Dusty had to leave us while we were talking. So I hope she saw my reply. But bye, Dusty. Thanks for stopping by. Um, We've gotten people together over the summer for like a potluck, just like met at the park. I mean, that has happened on occasion. So you can still do things like that and have gatherings without having an official support meeting. You know, you're not going to have childcare. You may have to bring your own food, but, you know, at least you can sit down at tables and let the kids run crazy. <laughs> right. Exactly right. Um, yeah. And I think if anyone is curious about, as you're hearing more about the support group, like the fostering the village and different things like that, like Marjorie was saying, we are looking at eventually making it a thing where we can replicate this. So the goal is to eventually work with Andrea and Laura who are co-facilitating this one and try to figure out how to do some things so that maybe like if Wendy is wanting to do something in her area, we can like give her like a packet or something like that and kind of help coach her through, um, coach her through this stuff. But like we said, it's not, I think like it's a true testament to what Laura and Andrea do every month because I, I don't think people realize how much effort there's is put into it and just the patience I think because you have to when people don't show up you just have to like tell yourself I'm going to do it again next month and hopefully someone mm -hmm. will show up and then hopefully six months later you you might actually have people show up <laughs> so what am I doing plug oh <laughs> I'm like what we have a dying and don't get here. discouraged the first year or two is probably the most difficult so don't get discouraged keep showing up you know you just have to keep you just have to keep doing it people will show up but you're gonna have to show them that you're gonna be there you know every single month whether anybody shows up or not because then one month they might actually show up because they really need to know what's going on and then they won't want to leave They'll be coming back. They'll make it a priority in their schedule, but you do have to just keep doing it. Yeah, Felicia said, uh, I'll let everyone else read the longer comment, but I'm, the, the blurb that I'm reading right here is she loves the concept of having a support group for everyone, where everyone can just trade off kids and kids feel like everyone is friends and family without stress and anxiety. Um, or even the moms have guilt for, for getting a respite. Yeah, and I think that was some of the, the idea and the hopes for that, like of getting people, because I think it's a whole concept of, I mean, talking about fostering the village, it is creating a village where you can foster together and do life together. Um, you know, I didn't even think about that either, but I think within a support group, if it's, if it's done the right way, which you guys are, is I think you feel safe in it, so you don't feel like you're being judged for like if you have yeah. questions or if you like something goes bizarrely wrong and I mean we all have those days where we didn't handle something right or we're embarrassed about handling something like this is a place mm -hmm. like that support group is like a place where you can kind of go divulge that and get it off your chest that hey I really right. screwed up um and maybe not even screwed up maybe you f-bombed up <laughs> like and you need to like get that off your chest to feel better and like and, and keep moving on and I feel like the support group is a place where people are like thinking, well, I've done similar or I, I'll probably do that tomorrow or like, <laughs> so there's no judgment there. Um, right. And I feel like that's a really cool thing too. I feel like that's actually magical. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I know when we started, um, you know, Felice talking about the man, the, the man, the mom guilt. <laughs> The, what? He's the, such mom a guild. the mom guilt um oh. and stuff with getting respite you know I, we would really be concerned about the fact that <laughs> um <laughs> ninja <laughs> <laughs> don't encourage him <laughs> <laughs> um you know when whenever you got respite you've got you know kids they're first of all they're being taken from their birth family and put with strangers and then yeah. if you are, you know, then they're, they might be going with transporters who are also strangers to go visit. And then maybe transporters are taking them. You know, they, there's so many strangers involved and we're trying to help them understand stranger danger and like not everybody's, right. you know, a friend. And, and then at the same time you're saying, oh, but go spend a weekend with these people and they're strangers too, you know? 
Um, so when you have other families that you're connected with where they're not going to stay with strangers, I feel like that's a good thing. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> you would think that, Laura, this is so not the first time we've had, usually it's our kids or uh, we have our other uh, person, Betsy Crockett. Her two kids are like right there. Um, <laughs> We're actually going to start wrapping up, you guys. So if anyone has questions for Laura um, about the support group, uh, maybe advice for what she thinks works, doesn't work, what she's seeing best work for parents or the most, I guess, the most needs that she, the need, biggest needs she sees foster and adoptive parents have. Um, whatever questions you guys have, um, go ahead. I know there's a lag. Go ahead, get those questions or, or advice for everyone listening right now. Uh, get that in. Um, if you aren't watching this live, we are going to watch the comments throughout the week. Um, so we will get back to you. So you can definitely leave comments below. Um, and I'm just going to remind everyone of a few things uh, that we have coming up. Right now we have um, the Chris Rankin Award happening right now for the best adoptive parent. Uh, head over to transfiguringadoption.com. We're going to be able to nominate someone uh, for the best adoptive parent through October 19th. Um, after October 19th, we're going to be pairing up three lucky finalists with some celebrities. We have Chris Rankin, of course, who, if you are familiar with the Harry Potter films, played Percy Weasley. He is going to be helping out. We also have uh, Stan, which his last name completely leaves me right now, but he played Victor Crumb in the Harry Potter films. Um, as well as Anne Heffron, who is an author who wrote the book, uh, You Don't Look Adopted. All three of them are going to be paired, be taking one of our three finalist stories and uh, asking people to vote for them on Facebook so that we can pick a winner. So definitely uh, go head over to transfiguringadoption.com and get your nomination in because this is going to be a really cool contest um, with some really cool things happening. So um yeah. Do you got anything else? No. That's coming up? Nothing else? Very cool. Nothing. Okay. Um, Laura, if people are watching this and they happen to be in the Marion, Illinois area, uh, they can, of course, do a search for Fostering the Village and, and find you there. How else? What's the best way for them to get connected with you or find out about the support group? Really, it's on the Facebook page. We do put everything on there about the meeting and the speaker. Our meeting time has changed. Um, we are the third Saturday now of the month. And don't ask me what day that is. We're in October, right? <laughs> so, and it's, it's, it's from 6 to 8 p.m. at Cornerstone Church in Marion, Illinois. Um, but let us know, find us on the Facebook page and you'll have a chance to RSVP and let us know how many adults, how many kids, make sure we have enough food and childcare. Sure. And actually I do want to make a plug. Our speaker for October is a therapist, Dr. Matt Buckman. And he is, he is, I don't know, setting Southern Illinois on fire about trauma behavior and trauma informed care. We are super excited to have him come in and speak. So, um, yeah, if you're in the area, come find us. That's awesome. Very cool. What was his yeah. name again? Dr. Matt Buckman. Dr. Matt Buckman. Take us. He is at Egyptian Health, I believe, over in like Harrisburg, El Dorado. Do That's a, where he works out of. Do a search for him. Find out more about him. I think that he's also listed on the Facebook page. Um, yeah. So, yeah, definitely find out more about that. Uh, if you're interested in starting a local support group, uh, we're not ready to quite launch that yet, but uh, email us at info at transfiguringadoption.com and we will work with you to let you know when we're ready to start that and, and help coach you through uh, for some things. <laughs> Felicia says, be right back. She's heading to Illinois now. <laughs> so, come on over, except we're in Florida, so it'd be really far over. Um, yeah, thank you so much, you guys. Definitely uh, check out Fostering the Village on their Facebook page. Um, also head over to Transfiguring Adoption and check out our uh, Best Adoptive Parent Award. Um, we're really putting out a plea for everyone to get involved with this. Um, 
Christina says, now it's on Saturday. Maybe we'll come when we are visiting home sometime. Oh, okay. Christina, Yay, Christina. Yay. Very cool. And Christina's in the Nashville area, correct? Yes. 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 Nashville. Yes, but her mama lives in Crab Orchard, or yeah, and her mama lives in Illinois, so. <laughs> well, very cool. Definitely give it a visit. Definitely go over and get involved with our contest. Um, we are really hoping, um, we have a lot of cool projects that we're wanting to do with Transfiguring Adoption. And I'll be honest, toward the end of the year, we are running a little lean. And we could definitely, uh, this contest is also a fundraiser for us. And we could use everyone's involvement with sharing the contest out on social media, as well as just getting involved. Uh, once we get to the voting, portion. Um, we are going to be asking for a dollar donation to vote for the best adoptive parent. The best adoptive parent's also going to get, uh, they're probably, they're going to be getting um, a personal message from Chris Rankin. They're also going to be getting um, an inscribed trophy award plaque. I don't know how else to say it. It's like a clock that's in a book. Like it's a, Plastic. it's a mahogany book. It's a thing. It's cool. With a, it's very cool. It's very official looking with your name inscribed on it. So. And a little prize package. We always try and get some donations and get some little things together for winners. Well, this is our first best. Um, oh, for me. <laughs> <laughs> best adoptive parent um, award, but we've done two now. Um, best foster parent so we've been able to kind of put together little packages and laura's joking about that but i'm i'm in all seriousness if you are an adoptive parent and you want to be nominated don't drop hints to your friends do it family. do it like i, I I'm, <laughs> I'm 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 so not even I'm, I'm smiling and laughing but i'm not even joking like if you like seriously like if you want to tell some friends like hey so there's this adoptive parent award i'm pretty great <laughs> like I totally go for it um, because I, I think with these celebrities that are getting on board they're so passionate about this and they're really excited about it it's going to be a really fun um, contest once we get past the nomination phase so you're really going to want to be involved with this it's going to be a great opportunity for everyone involved so thank you so much to everyone thank you Laura for joining us this was last minute that we were able to ask her and get her on board so it's been great Thank you so much for everyone that's gotten, uh, that was able to show up tonight. It's good to see everyone again. Please share and let everyone know we do Monday caregiver check-in every Monday. That's why it's called Monday caregiver check-in. Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're going to be here on Facebook and YouTube every week. So we'll see you next week. This is uh, Laura, Margie Fink, and Darren Fink, and we hope that we are helping you to nurture and grow your foster or adoptive families. Don't forget, if you have ideas of what you like to talk about next week, drop them down here in the comments, and we will look at them and talk about that for next week. See you, everyone.